Welcome to episode 35 of the Sleeper Sports Media Podcast. I'm Nick Wetosh. Without a doubt, without further ado, I'm just going to jump on into it. Today's show is, um, for, for today's shows, the plan is to talk about Jake Paul, Tommy Fury, the reaction to it. Uh, we're going to jump into AW Revolution predictions and rundown. I know that the final team will be announced tonight on Dynamite and then uh, some WrestleMania predictions. It was reported that Triple H wants a smaller card for both nights. At this point, might as well just take away the two night manias and make it one again. Um, I'm not sure how I feel about that because everyone is upset that uh, celebrities like Logan Paul are going to get on the show, but no one else is. And then we're going to wrap it up with XFL Week 3 picks. So, first off, the Tommy Fury and Jake Paul fight. thought it was a great fight. Uh, don't think anyone should have lost this fight. I think it should have been a draw if there was no clear winner for all the judges. Um, I thought that with both of them getting deducted a point, yes, it, it's a scratch, but it was in opposite or two different rounds. Um, so that means that Jake would have had two 10-8 rounds. And with the knockdown in the eighth, that being the second one, I felt that if if there was a winner, it could have been Jake. Not sure why it was Tommy. I, it was a good fight, and Tommy put pressure on the entire time. Tommy was, the jab was working for him. Jake was taking shots. Tommy landed more punches, but Jake was more accurate with the punches that he landed. And he took the shots, so he can prove that he can take shots from a real boxer, since that's so important to everyone. Uh, nevertheless, Tommy won, and uh, I think they're going to do the rematch. I think the rematch happens next, before Jake would go and fight KSI. Uh, like Air Hawani said, the Nate Diaz fight's probably dead now, both in, well, maybe just in boxing. Maybe Nate Diaz still jumps into the PFL with Jake. Who knows? Uh, I don't think, I think now Jake is definitely not going to do MMA next. Uh, he's not going to leave boxing and go into another sport with a, with a loss. I think he's going to try and get that rematch done and then do the KSI fight still in December. And then go from there with the PFL debut, him actually fighting MMA being next year. But uh, there's another, some other breaking news about this. John Fury took to Instagram and now on Twitter as well to say that Jake Paul never paid Tommy Fury for their deal of the double or nothing. And John went on to say that he can't, it doesn't matter about contracts. They shook hands and this and that, and he should honor it. And it's like, well, you didn't, Tommy didn't sign the contract. So, and yeah, you and Jake shook hands, but you and Jake weren't the one that fought. So that's just the Furies being the Furies, I guess. But I, I'm excited for a potential rematch and to find out what's next for Jake. It sucks that he finally lost, but it's better than, like Greg Paul said on BS with Jake Paul, it's better that he loses now, gets over it uses this and it's better that it happens now than if he ended up being 15 and 0 and then he loses it's good it would hurt way more then than it would than it does now um also on bs with jake paul logan paul said he wants to avenge jake's loss to tommy just like jake wants to avenge logan's loss to ksi so there's a potential for say jake and jake and tommy don't do the rematch jake's next fight is something else jake's next fight is a pfl mma match um, then on the KSI card, maybe they get Logan Paul versus versus Tommy Fury. That would be awesome. Um, and other than that, it was a great event. Uh, apparently, the pay-per-views did really, really well. Uh, so the, it's going to be a tough, a tough road to, for Jake to come back from this. But we all know that the problem child, he's done it before. He'll do it again. And it was a great great fight one of his best fights yet it looked it was an actual boxing fight everyone's gonna say oh he clenched the the last however many minutes of the round the eighth round after he got that knockdown but it is what it is it was still a great fight it was a 50 50 fight anybody's anybody's anybody could have won um there's tons of people that thought jake won 
tons of people that thought it was right. And I guess it was. It was a fit. I mean, a 50 50 fight. It could be anybody's fight, but I think a draw would have been better. And I can't wait for the rematch. AEW Revolution Predictions and Rundown. I'm going to pull up the card that we have now. I believe that it's, got, it's headlined by, of course, MJF versus Brian Danielson in a 60 minute Iron Man match. I'm excited for that one. That is this. It's. This weekend, March 5th, Sunday, out in California at the Chase Center. Uh, MJF, Brian Danielson, 60-minute Ironman match with the AEW World Championship. It's going to be a great match. Uh, the Guns versus the Acclaimed versus Jay Lethal and Jeff Jarrett versus another team in a four-way tag team match for the AEW World Tag Team Championships. The winner, the last member of this match will be revealed tonight on Dynamite, I believe. And... I'm excited for this one too. It's gonna to be a great match. All four of these teams are are cool. They can rut. They they're good. Uh, Jay Lethal and Jeff, Jeff Jarrett. I'm can do with or without. Uh, but I would like like to see the Acclaim win him back. I don't think they will. I think it's gonna to go to the Guns. Uh, and then the next match is John Moxley versus Hangman Adam Page in a Texas Death Match. I'm excited to see one of these because I've never watched one of these live. Uh, my pick for this one, I would have to say John Moxley, but at the same time, Adam Page coming back from his injury after John won the first one, I would say probably, probably Adam Page wins this one. Samoa Joe versus Wardlow for the AEW TNT Championship. I think Wardlow should win this one and will win this one, get that title back, and then have a have a even better title run, title run than the first one, and just be dominant like we know he can be. Uh, there is then next is Chris Jericho versus Ricky Starks. The Jericho Appreciation Society is banned from ringside. At first, this was being promoted as everyone is banned from ringside, and now it's just the JS. So I saw something on Twitter, I believe, that said someone is going to show up and then join the JS. That way, it's not the JS that's at ringside, but that's the reason why there's someone that shows up. Uh, I like Ricky Stark in this one, but you never know with Chris Jericho. <clears throat> Next is a three-way championship for the AEW World. Three-way match for the AEW Women's World Championship. Jamie Hayter versus Soraya versus Ruby Soho. I believe Hayter's going to retain, and Ruby's going to turn on her at the end and then join Soraya and Tony Storm. I don't know what the point of that is, this trio of just ex-WWE female stars. Kind of... Kind of boring, but then again, I don't watch week to week unless I only watch when MJF is on. And then, according to Wikipedia, the seventh match and seven match seventh match on the card is a six man tag team match for the AW World Trios Championship, the Elite versus the House of Black. This is a cool match. Don't mind it. Like both these groups, uh, I see the Elite retaining, and then going from there. Who knows? There's been reports that Kenny Omega is not set on re on staying in AEW. He would be open to going to WWE, and I think that would be fantastic. And then the Young Bucks, their contracts are up soon as well. I can see them jumping ship to AEW or to WWE as well, following Kenny. Uh, I think the Bucks in in WWE would improve the tag team division tenfold. The Bucks versus the Profits. The Bucks versus the Usos the the possibilities are endless that, that'd be that'd be sick and then eventually the elite they could drop it to the house of black or they drop it to the house of black on sunday and then who knows what happens then but i like the elite retaining in this one as well so wrestlemania predictions like i said triple there's a report that triple h wants a smaller card and that is leading to people being frustrated, talent being frustrated because they're being left off. There's going to be no Andre the Giant Battle Royale um, like there is every year. And it, at that point, if, if it's already on two nights, then why have one, one, one night, one, either uh, the second one, they could do what they did last year. The men's on Friday night on SmackDown and then the women's on Raw after WrestleMania and then the winners both get a championship match of their choosing. Um, other, other stuff they could do. 
and there's another report that Brock Lesnar there Brock Lesnar was pitched to work a match with Bray Wyatt and he shut it down. And that's why they're now doing Brock Lesnar versus Omos, which that's gonna be my my bathroom break, get food, kind of stretch match. And I'm not looking I besides watching Brock Lesnar's music and and, and entrance. Not going to be paying any attention to that. That's probably going to go on mute at that point whenever Omos comes out. Uh, hoping that's a quick four to six minute match. A five minute match with a couple F5s and Brock Lesnar burying Omos. Because, I mean, what he's not, he doesn't do anything. Um, so the potential, the card we have now, Roman Reigns versus Cody Rhodes for the Undisputed Universal Championship. I still want them to... to separate them i think that would be way better you can give cody the wwe title and end that there and then pick up with cody and sammy keep them on raw and let roman keep the universal title because he's held that one longer that's the one that he's nearing the big numbers with although he is nearing a thousand days as champion i still i i it's a it's a toss-up for me i would like to see either one win, but I'd rather see Cody win. If Cody's going to win, I'd rather see it be for the WWE title. The next one look may, most likely headlining night two. Charlotte Flair versus Rhea Ripley, SmackDown Women's Championship. Obviously, I think Rhea's going to win. It's going to be a great match. So far, the build's been great. Rhea showing up on SmackDown with being on Raw, bringing the Judgment Day. I think the Judgment Day will stay together. They'll go to SmackDown with Rhea. And that's how they're also going to continue to build Ray and Dom for WrestleMania. Uh, Bianca Belair versus Asuka for the Raw Women's Championship. I'd like to see Asuka win. Bianca's had her time. She's been great. Uh, give her some time off and then have a return. But I think Asuka's going to win. I think Asuka's going to have a great reign, like her NXT type reign. It's going to be, it's going to be good. And then so far, Brock Lesnar versus Omos with MVP. This is boring just because it's Omos. Uh, and then likely to be other matches are going to be Logan Paul and Seth Rollins. They're bu uh, building for that right now. Other ones are going to be Edge and Finn. Probably I've been seeing predicted to be in a hell in a cell. Uh, and then Becky Lynch and Lita versus... Ronda Rousey and Shayna Baszler for the women's tag team titles, which is awesome. They're maybe they can bring some relevance to those titles since they have never been relevant. Uh, but I know Becky said that she has been secretly wanting to win those for a long time, and now she's a triple crown winner. That could be great for it. Uh, and then I I think Bailey. Versus Trish Stratus with damage control in her corner. Or even do a triple threat of damage control. Becky and Lita and Ronda and Shayna. That'd be great. Um, then as far as the men's tag tag titles go. I think everything is leading to Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn against the Usos. Don't know if they're going to split the tag titles and then split the main titles. I don't know if they're going to split them at all. I hope they do. Uh, but it, it'd, be, it'd be great either way. Sami Zayn and Kevin Owens versus the Usos. That's probably my pick for the tag titles on either night. Uh, I look for the Profits and other big tag teams to be in a match to determine the number one contenders going leaving WrestleMania season uh, and heading into the build for Backlash as well, and SummerSlam. Uh, Theory and Cena. Looks like that's going to be... Hopefully that kicks off on mo this coming Monday Night Raw. And let's, as far as that, I think that's, there might be a couple others. Uh, you could do Judgment, you could throw Judgment Day in there. Dom and Ray, that's another one. Potential matchup at WrestleMania. And that's, that's all I, most of the, the wrestling news. So we're going to jump into XFL Week 3. Week two was great. There, uh, the only game I didn't watch. I watched Thursday night. That was a great game. Um, I watched 
I watched a little bit of the game Saturday. That was very, very boring. Um, and I didn't get to watch my San Antonio Brahmas because of the Jake Paul fight. But so to kick off week three, this is my official picks for the XFL week three. Seattle Sea Dragons at the Vegas Vipers. A um, little worried about this one. It's going to be, should be a decent game. Uh, the Vegas game was the real, the boring game last weekend and the weather didn't help. Uh, the field looked awful. They said that they just laid the turf down and it looked terrible. This is Saturday, March 4th at 7 p.m. I'm going to pick the, the Sea Dragons. Then we have St. Louis Battlehawks at the D.C. Defenders on Sunday, March 5th at 1 o'clock. I'm torn with this one because I, I do like Seattle, but D.C., they came from behind again, um, as well as so did St. Louis, A.J. McCarron. This is a toss up, but I think I like see I like St. Louis more than I like DC, so I'm going to go with St. Louis, and then Orlando and Arlington. I haven't gotten to, gotten a chance to watch either one of these teams. This is Sunday, March fifth at four. I have a Landry Jones jersey, and I was a Renegades fan back in 2020, so I'll go with the Renegades, and then Sunday, March fifth, the San Antonio Brahmas versus the Houston Roughnecks. As much as I hate to say this. I I want to go with the Brahmas and Heinz Ward getting his second win, but it's going to be tough. It's going to be tough. Houston is looking really good right now. Everything about them. Uh, I'm going to pick the Brahmas in an upset, but I I don't think they'll. They might not do it. Houston might be might be a favorite to win to win the XFL. So that's that's going to do it for that. And this is concluded episode 35 of the sleeper sports media podcast appreciate everyone who watched or will watch uh subscribe on here on youtube check out the facebook group sleeper sports media as well as the exceptional sports news group on facebook uh you can follow me on twitter at and same thing on instagram and keep coming on back i'm gonna push out more and more stuff the goal is to hit 400 by night one of wrestlemania and we're getting there. I didn't think I would hit 300, 300 plus so fast. The goal was 350 by my birthday. Didn't happen. That's okay. New goal. We're at 310 and counting. So 90 more until the goal. We hit the goal of 400 for night one of WrestleMania, which is April 1st. So thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.